So welcome everybody to chapter six. Um, today, first of all, we're going to amend some minor mistakes or some minor things that we haven't yet done. Um, mainly, um, we might have to recompile uh, libd um, because there's a small um, error in the kind of like features that we need um, to get to the next step. And we're going to set up a firewall finally. Um, so that final firewall is in a separate guide. I put it into the Linux guide, but it's also relatively simple and um, called the uncomplicated firewall for a reason. Um, so let me share the screen. And um, I'm going to SSH into my node again. I'm going to do that with two windows because it's relatively convenient to um, have like the logs in one thing. Um, so often the first thing I just do when I start, I um, I check on my node, lncli get info, uh, so the Lightning Network command line interface get info. And this shows me some very basic information about my node, what kind of uh, software am I currently running, um, what is my pub key, um, what did I call my node, I called it nodeacademy.org. Um, I have zero pending channels, one active channel. So I'm kind of checking, is, are my channels active? Um, how many do I have in total? Um, this might tell me um, what I'm currently synced to, but most importantly, we have the two um, points here, synced to chain, meaning synced to the blockchain. Uh, that's the most important one, and synced to the graph. I'm not synced to the graph yet. Um, I don't know why it's taking me so long. If I look here at the bottom, LNCLI get network info, then I can see that my node has only seen so far 3,400 other nodes and 6,400 channels. Um, that's out of like probably a total of 16,000, 17,000 total nodes. Um, but what matters here is, is that if I run this again, that I see like some kind of progress, right? So here the channels go up from 6,400 to 6,461. Um, so there's some kind of some kind of progress here happening in the background. Actually, in this case, they're not. So I have to, um, but I'm not going to be too concerned about this now. Um, if it does get stuck, then sometimes um, maybe you do have to just restart it. Let me just find this here. Um, so it's make it's doing something. Um, that's good enough for me right now. Um, what we were missing in how we compile lit D is that here under Lightning Terminal, um, we do have to run make install one more time. Um, at least for those of us who compiled this with make go install, um, apparently make go install does not install lit D with like everything that we need um, because we uh, kind of then it then misses the um, UI interface. Um, so all you need to do is just go back here into the into that repository and run make install. I'm not going to do that now. It takes a little bit of time. I did that in the background. Um, and that's, um, yeah, that's really all um, we still need. And then you have to restart lit D. The other thing that I wanted to do is install the um, uncomplicated firewall. So, well, it's it should already be installed in your um, Ubuntu machine. If not, you should be able to install it with sudo apt install ufw. Um, should already be installed um, by default. Um, so the, this is kind of the, um, the feedback you get. Um, the other command that you can try running is just sudo ufw status. And this should show you, in my case, um, it's already active. Um, to make it active, the first thing we're going to have to do is allow SSH connections. Because if we don't allow, even before we enable the, um, the firewall, we have to kind of allow SSH as long as we're using SSH to connect to our node. If our node is, if our node is at home, it's just, a, for example, just a laptop that has a keyboard and a um, monitor that we use to access it, then we don't need to, we don't use SSH, then we also don't need to allow it. But for everyone else, it's sudo ufw allow SSH. And that creates a rule that allows us to um, connect from the outside world. Um, the next thing we need to do is enable the firewall, um, sudo ufw enable. And this does 
um, this could disrupt connections, um, which is why when before we do everything else here, we're going to test whether this works. So we're going to keep one of these windows alive in case something goes wrong. And with the other one, we're just exiting and SSHing back in. Um, and as long as this connection works here, um, then we're fine and then we can continue. Otherwise, we would have to um, disable this firewall here with the commands um, sudo ufw disable. But we can enable it. And we can also uh, already allow some incoming connections. So what we need for today's session is sudo ufw allow 8443, uh, because that's what we're going to use to access our, um, our user interface. What we can also um, allow is in case we run our node on a clearnet IP, then we can also allow 9735 um, so that other Lightning nodes can connect to our Lightning nodes without problem. If we want to make our Bitcoin node available to the public, then we can also um, UFW allow 83333. The next step that we need to check is we need to check our configuration file for LID again. Um, this sits under .lit slash litconf, um, because we need here what I entered here into the third row. Um, but we need this again only if we're running um, litd on a machine that is remote somewhere. So if we're running it on a virtual private server in the cloud, or if we're running it on a machine that's kind of sitting in a separate room from the one that we're working on, we need to add this line so that we are able to connect to litd um, from the outside. Otherwise, we don't need to um, add this command. Um, then we need to restart litd. Um, and once this is done, all we need is the IP address of our, um, of our node, um, which in this case, right, it's the same IP address that we're logging into. It's 172.8.1. 181. This is my node. Your node is going to be a bit different depending on whether it's on a virtual private server or whether it's on a computer on your home network. This is going to look a little bit different. Um, and we amend this with colon 8443. Um, and we also have to prefix this with HTTPS. Um, if you connect the first time, um, then you're probably going to get a little warning here of made a screenshot of this warning. Warning potential security risk ahead. This is because we can't get a, um, because we can't get a TLS certificate. Um, so this kind of has a, um, has a, right? So if we were connecting to it, um, then we can't really get a certificate for this IP address. If, we can, if you're connecting a proper domain name to it, then we can, and then we can uh, disable this warning, but um, generally, uh, we just have to be aware. This is something that we ex expect. Um, we also need to remember our. We also need to remember our um, Lightning Terminal password, which is the one that we entered into our configuration file. So in this case, it's here. We can copy this, paste it in here, um, and once we click submit, then we enter. Um, Lightning Terminal. Uh, this is litd. Um, so this already shows us some basic information. It shows us our node is running. Um, and from here, the, um, the most important button here is to connect to Terminal. This is only something we need once in a while. So once I click on this um, button, yeah, why? Let's try this again. Ideally, it should just show us to here. It should show us the screen, um, which has a connection phrase. So this is not a um, this is not a seed phrase of our node. This is just a connection phrase. Um, we can click on connect, and it should ask us to come up with a password. And so this password is something you can ideally you have it in your password manager. So whenever you then go back to Lightning.terminal 
um, terminal.lightning.engineering. And when you reconnect, you only have to remember this password. You don't have to use this connection phrase um, the next time. So I'm going to choose a new password. And now I'm in um, the view. And this is, uh, I think, kind of the, yeah, the most convenient user interface for your node. Um, it shows you, um, and here under channels, it shows you how much outbound capacity you have, which is kind of your balance, 100 sats, how much inbound capacity you have. It shows you all your channels, which in this case is one channel from this node. Um, the channel is currently active. That's something we'll be looking for. Um, the total capacity and here a little, a little bit visual, visualization. You can also here at the top see um, our balance again. Um, if we go under history, we can see that um, when we received those 100 sats, here we can also create invoices so i can create another 100 sat invoice give it a memo um this is going to show a qr code um, that i can then just scan from my from my mobile phone or from another wallet um, and kind of test if these uh, connections are working so let me pull up my wallet and from there, I should just be able to scan this, um, pay it. And now let's hope one, two, three here, you received a payment for 100 sats. And then up here, the balance should, uh, here the 100 sat payment shows up. Um, and for the balance to show up, I might have to refresh this here. Yeah, max outbound now shows 200 sats. So that works great. Um, and from here, we can also um, send transactions or we can also open channels we can also um, look at kind of nodes that we might want to open a channel with so in this case it's grayed out because we don't have an on-chain balance um, but this yeah let's just kind of choose based on some metrics um, what peers uh, to open channels with this lets us um, um, use loop which is a swap service for on-chain or off-chain sats. So if you want to refill a channel, you can use a loop in, or if you want to um, put some, for example, use this node to receive payments and you want to put these payments into cold storage, then you can make a swap and loop out without having to close channels. Um, there's also a, here you can buy channels. So for example, um, if you want a few sats node to open a channel with you, then for 2,500 sats per day, they will order. They will open between five million sats and ten million sats, and there's a few other offers there as well. Once you, there's a few other things that are only really relevant once you try to turn your node into a powerful routing node. Uh, for example, the ranking up here. That's only really relevant um, if you want to like be a powerful routing node yourself. And eventually, once. Um, add your own uh, channels in here, your own offers. And um, I think that's already like a super useful tool um, that makes access to your node a lot easier. That's something where that you can access from anywhere in the world. So even if you're using your laptop to travel around, you'll always be able to go to terminal.lightning.engineering and um, use this password to connect back into your node. Now, the next thing we're going to go back here into um, LitD uh, because in LitD, we have this great feature here at the bottom called Lightning Node Connect, which um, here you have the generated session. That's all the sessions from your node um, to other clients. And so this generated session is the one we just created here. Um, so that's the session to, um, to Terminal. Um, and we're going to create a new session here to connect to Zeus. Um, and this is uh, this protocol is called Lightning Node Connect, and it uses a, a proxy server to connect in over the clear net from your node at home, no matter if it's at home or on a VPS, to your mobile phone. Um, so you don't have to worry about Tor connections. You don't have to worry about opening ports. Um, this is actually a relatively convenient and reliable and fast way of running, um, of connecting your home. Um, server or your home node to your mobile phone, no matter where you are. So I'm going to call this Zeus. 
and I'm going to leave this with the admin permissions because this is for myself and I want to be able to like inspect everything on the fly. Um, so as I click here on Zeus, this um, creates the new session and then shows the QR code. And now I can open in my Zeus wallet. If you're faster than me, you can also try to scan it. Um, in my Zeus wallet, I can um, add a new node, which typically should be first clicking on the top left on the, on the Zeus icon and then um, on the connection and then on the plus sign and then scan the QR code and then save note config is what it's called. And once I'm connected, you can also give it a, a nickname here. And once I'm connected, you should be able to see your balance, which in my case is 200 sats off chain and zero sats on chain. And you should be able to then also see the, um, see the tip channels and be able to open and close them and everything. Um, you can revoke these sessions at any time. Um, you can create a new one. Um, we can also create one for Albi with read-only permissions, which looks like this. And then in Albi, um, we can also here copy the pairing phrase um, and then paste it into Albi. The, um, yeah, the amount of options we have in here are pretty much endless. Um, so why would we create like a read only account? That's super useful if you want to, uh, for example, give somebody access to, access to your node in a way that they can only receive funds. For example, imagine you're operating a store and you want to give your employees like the ability to receive, or you want to have a um, you want to have a little device at checkout that is able to generate invoices and check if they're paid but that isn't able to spend sats itself, then you can create such a read-only session. You can also, and this is very useful, create custodial sub-accounts. Um, so in this case, I'm going to choose custom in here. Um, and then under next, I choose the custodial account. And you have to give it a balance. You can't say zero. So kind of everybody who you open a custodial account for, you have to also give them one sat. Um, and um, these defaults, they're fine. So see their activity, meaning their own transaction history. Send and receive funds. And now if you hit this custodial, if you, if you scan this custodial QR code with your Zeus wallet, for example, then you should be able to get a um, yeah, custodial sub-account that uses my node uh, so kind of like I'm the custodian and you have to trust me. Um, but I think that's a super useful feature if you, for example, want to give um, yeah, some, some colleagues or family or friends access to a node in a custodial way without having to sign them up with channels. Um, or if you just want to, for example, don't want to have the keys to your node on your phone, wherever you go. You only want to have the keys to like a small um, sub amount. This becomes relevant if your node suddenly carries more sats in it than what you're comfortable with. There's also lots of other ways to create um, custom sessions. This can be interesting if, um, for example, you, have, you wanna have different actions for, um, let's say your managing your node, you want somebody else to be able to set fees and um, loop in, loop out, or buy and sell channels, but you don't want them to send and receive funds. Um, then you can say um, here, some the liquidity manager, they're able to do all these things except sending and receiving, or they're able to do everything except sending. Or um, in this case, they're able to only send and receive. So they can't really manage your node, but they are able to send and receive and so on and so on. So this is the um, the admin and um, you can also make them expire. So you can say this is um, only valid for 90 days. And then here, if you run your own proxy server, then you can also um, make use of that. Um, I believe that is everything I wanted to show off. 
I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Who has some questions or who has tried this out before I go and reset all my passwords? This is kind of just like a personal precaution. Um, so this page is what I call the LitD user interface. And this is something that you only need to access to create these sessions. So it's only something that if you want to add your mobile phone, then you need access to it. If you want to generate a session um, here in Lightning Terminal, then you, thank you for sending me, for sending me sats, um, then the, then we need uh, LitD in this case. But what we, um, but one, but most likely you will not access this page very often. You will only access this page when it comes to creating and removing accounts. So what I tend to do is after I access this page and after I no longer use it, I just open, I just close my firewall and I say sudo ufw deny 8443 and now anyone even if you know the password um, you wouldn't be able to um, connect to it it will just uh, time out um, hopefully though it should uh, it's probably not gonna let you connect now unless the port is the connection is probably still open yeah um this might still work yeah if you are opening if you're now coming in from a new connection, maybe if I close it, then it's not going to work anymore. Um, then ideally you will um, be blocked here. Yeah, I need to make sure this doesn't work. Um, so I lower my file firewall when I have access to it and then I close it again. Um, and I'm still able to make use of this and I'm still able to use my mobile wallet The guide um, should have all these steps in it. Um, the only thing you need to look out for is that the firewall guide is here hidden in chapter two. Now I can check back with my progress of my node, how it's syncing. Uh, syncing to the graph can take a surprisingly long amount of time. But while you're syncing to the graph, the um, while you're syncing to the graph, you can still receive payments. Um, you might also be able to send payments, but whether you send them or not um, kind of comes dependent on whether the nodes in the graph are yeah are available. Um, errors, especially during the during the whole sync process, like sometimes things go wrong. Um, what we'll do next week is probably our last session for a bit, um, and that will be some basic node maintenance. So we'll go into our node, we'll make sure everything is running, and then we'll also go through the commands of how to upgrade Bitcoin and how to upgrade L and D. Um, and I think with Eric's help, we're also going to um, use some configurations to automate things like starting starting Bitcoin D automatically at startup or starting even LitD automatically at startup. That makes things a bit more convenient when the server somehow dies or when we need to restart it, then we don't need to remember so many commands and so we'll often look back. What, uh, what do we lose when that graph is not synced yet? Like, what can we not do? Um, you might not be able to make payments reliably oh. because the because your node doesn't find its way to the receiving node.
All right. If you have any more questions, then um, the telegram I'll be in the Telegram group um, for a little longer. Um, so feel free to ask there. And yeah, I'll open another batch of channels soon. So get your pub keys in and get your invoices in. Thank you all. Thank you.